<laughs> you said, uh, will it be used to replace these things, or will it uh, branch out new directions? So, I, yes. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's, it will make maybe open up new markets and new possibilities, because what it is, it's, it's cash flow rate. You can send cash over the internet. And sometimes you don't want to send cash over the internet. So if I'm buying a new fridge, you don't want to send cash over the internet, and hope that some Germans send it up to me. I prefer to have a credit card and, and wait for it to, to arrive on my door, and then I'm sure that I can do a cash back or whatever if I don't get my right fridge sent up. So, so uh, for example, if you want to buy a newspaper article, I don't want to sign up this paywall and then do my email and everything just to, to read a single article in, in, in the New York Times. I prefer just to pay for the cash over the internet. And I think there's a lot of different businesses popping up that we can't even imagine of where we really benefit from, from using cash on the internet in that sense. And I think that that's one thing we see it from, where you use the, the transaction feature of Bitcoin. Not other features, but the transaction feature is, is a driver. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it kind of ties back to the, the scalability, you know, I mean, obviously with my project, my whole project is based on creating a higher layer that can run over Bitcoin that allows you to do smaller transactions or more complicated transactions that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do directly on the blockchain itself, you know, and I'm a big believer in what Garcic was saying about the off off-chain transactions. Obviously, that's what my system is all about. It's all about taking the coins that are on the blockchain and putting them into, say, a voting pool of transaction servers so that no single server can steal those coins. <clears throat> and then from there, now you can enable much smaller transactions at a much cheaper price um, or much more complicated transactions. You can have, you know, let's say you have a bunch of commercial transactions going on that are all just sort of occurring off the chain. I mean, the coins are sitting there on the chain, but all the transactions are occurring off the chain. And the only time you see something happen on the chain itself is when someone bails back out of the system. Let's go back to the, uh, to Michael's hand. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Can Bitcoin scale by the blockchain transaction? Well, I don't know necessarily how scalable it is. I mean, I think that's up for debate. But I think, um, once you introduce a higher layer with off-chain transactions, then it's completely scalable, no problems. The, the, that might introduce a separate problem of, well, you know, what if I want to take the coins and put them on a transaction server where it maybe is more scalable, and then what if I have to worry about the server stealing the coins? And so that's why I would say put them in a voting pool so they're recoverable even if the server disappears. And then now you can do all these things that you can do on a server that wouldn't necessarily be as feasible on the chain itself. You know, one example being mobile transactions. Probably a lot of, you know, the sort of Kmart, Walmart transactions that, that are going to be coming are going to be happening through mobile phones. So do you want to download the whole blockchain continuously onto a mobile phone? If not, then you're probably going to issue the coins onto a transaction server and the phone will just be interfaced to the transaction server. And transaction servers can be quite scalable, no problems there. So as long as the server can't steal those coins, then that's probably sort of the release valve. And that's, that's what I'm working towards. It's actually, it is possible to, to process a blockchain on a mobile phone. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, How about I colored coins? I agree with the point about um, many other types. How about of colored stuff? coins, though? Because you have to trace it all yeah, the way back. Right. So you have to have the whole chain on the phone to yeah, do that. Indeed. In that case, then it's... Uh, People aren't using that today. Yeah. Um, so going back to uh, Michael's points about you know credit cards giving you these features like chargebacks and, and some of them even you know reward you with free air miles and so on. Um, how do you see you know do you think Bitcoin can grow to have some of these features like dispute mediation or even chargeback type support and things like that? Do you see this in Bitcoin's future? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, you can build just about anything you can imagine. You can build right on top of Bitcoin, and we, we've talked a lot about what's possible. Uh, I think we should also mention what's uh, stupidly easy. Uh, if you wanted to today start a new protocol layer on top of Bitcoin, uh, a lot of people don't realize you can do it without going to a bunch of venture capitalists and saying, "Hey, I've got this idea." You can act. If you're familiar with Kickstarter, I assume most of you. You can actually say, okay, 
here's my pitch, here's my group of developers, there's lots of developers in this room. If you guys get a bunch of trustworthy guys together that people have heard of and you say, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna make a new protocol layer, it's gonna have new features X, Y, and Z on top of Bitcoin. Uh, and you know, who's, here's who we are, and here's our plan, and here's our Bitcoin address, and anybody who sends coins to this address owns a piece of our new protocol. Anybody can do that. And I've been telling people this for at least a year now. I've been saying, you know, because I want to invest in it. I, I don't have a ton of coins, but that's where I want to invest my coins. And I, I have yet to find somebody who wants my coins. Does anybody in this room like want my Bitcoins? Because I want to I'll get them.